Dorkening and all affiliated shows are not intended for anyone under the age of 18. The following may contain discussions or scenes that have adult situations, graphic violence, nudity, strong sexual content, and graphic language. This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Deadly coffee, coffee is my, is my guilty, guilty pleasure. pleasure. The, aroma the aroma is so intoxicating. So intoxicating. It, brings it brings all of my neighbors, my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so, they're disgusting. so disgusting. Hey, hey, happy Monday, everybody. And I hit the wrong button again. What the hell? <laughs> it's a Monday. It's a Monday. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here. We have a kick-ass show for you, as always. And uh, with us tonight, Benjamin. How's it going, bud? What's happening, everybody? So, uh, yeah, Leo, a little bit too much before the show? Yeah, it, just a little bit. Just a little I mean, bit. Yeah, you popped in in between the intro and the commercial. And I know. I, I, I was know. like, the show's not about Leo tonight. I'm sorry. Well, you know, we, <laughs> we got a ton of people watching, so I wanted to make sure we got to the show as quick as possible, so I, I broke up the the uh, the intros. Ah. Uh, yeah, and a very, very special guest co-host, Mr. Steve Van Sampson from Retro Red Octopus. How's it going, sir? Excellent, guys. How, how's it going, Leo? How's it going, Ben? How are we doing tonight? Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. I want to know how he got super special guest, and I just got, hey, it's Ben. Because I see you every week. Yeah, you're, you're old hat. <laughs> I'm new hat. But I am never, never on Creator Spotlight. You know, it's, it's funny because I'm not even a hat person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't cover that beautiful bald head either, so. I never do. <laughs> uh okay so we are going to get this show started uh because we know we have a lot of people waiting for him so our guest uh you may know him from captain kirk and star trek continues he's brawly from dragon ball z uh also in my research he did some voice acting in world of warcraft bubsy and he won the american anime award for edward elric in Full Metal Alchemist, we welcome the most awesomely talented, Mr. Vic Magnolia. How's it going, sir? Hello, Wait. everybody. Hello. I'm. You know, I'm sorry I can't stay because I was listening to your intro and it said no one under eighteen. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm going to jump in. Quick correction: It's Vic Mignana. <laughs> Mignana. 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 Italiano. <laughs> uh also let everybody know we are streaming live on dead dork radio as well and uh, also tons of other places we're streaming so wow the comments are just flying in oh, yeah yeah, yeah. The... that one's fine. leo leo you got you got to say broly not brawly you know you're gonna get your head ripped off or something oh, those, those dbz may. fans are rabid and i would like right? to say that this first segment is brought to you by topo chico they didn't yeah. pay us a damn thing yet. He's going to be drinking it yet. <laughs> Topo Chico. Uh, all your refreshment needs if you're Vic. <laughs> I will not be drinking Topo Chico. Uh -huh. Sherry I'll knows it. Choice. Sherry knows it. I, uh, These guys know. Before the show, I ran down and fixed myself. Uh, uh, not a little bit, but uh, good a thing. A lot of it. Yeah, oh, is vodka. that a urine sample? No, no, no. It's, it's uh, vodka and Diet Mountain Dew. I think it's going to look the same coming out, bro. It's vodka and urine. There we go. Uh, so, ton of people watching. So, if you have questions, please, uh, please post them in the comments, and I'll get to them as much as possible. Or as hi, Mahana. Hi, Cody. Hi, SSJ Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I can tell Leo's already had at least two drinks because he skipped like four <laughs> of the chats um, he ended ended and went like whoa uh, who did I, I miss who did i miss uh 
Travis! You got Tori and then Sherry, Joey, and James. And then you skipped the three of them and went to, yeah, you got that one. One up above that. Stacy. And hello. then above that. When re, what does that say? Joey! Winery called said Granny is making stew tonight. Okay. Oh, that Winry. Winry called. That's a Full Metal <clears throat> Alchemist reference, Ben. Yeah, I know. That's hey, my son. Hey, Ben. Hey, Ben. Yeah. Try not, try not to talk, okay? Um, <laughs> I used to like you. We'll, we'll take it from here, Matt. <laughs> listen. 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 You're picking on the wrong guy tonight because I still have videos and pictures of you in the green room singing. Hey, you know, Ben, at least when Leo fucks up, he's got the the honey glow in his cheeks, and we just can't <laughs> resist them. What, what do you got, bro? What do you got? Leo, are you old enough to drink yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have a very young face. I'm actually, yeah, you uh, do. I, I'm, uh, actually in my mid-40s. Wow. Yeah. Lucky yeah. you. So Lucky I, you. I, I got the baby face, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, we all have our crosses to bear. I know. <laughs> the cross uh, of eternal youth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. So now yeah. somebody wants to know what you're smoking, Ben. No, actually, that was Jeff, and he was picking on me because Steve picked on me. Squally, Squally's here. Yep, he says Leo zooming faster, faster than the chat. <laughs> it might be the <laughs> we don't even have to limit his two. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I wanted to kick it off. Yeah. Leo forties. Yeah. 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 Uh, Hey Billy, how's it going? Um, so, uh, you know, somebody mentioned up above, you know, hello, Captain Kirk. Uh, so you did an incredible job as Captain Kirk in Star Trek continues. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know, you know, uh, being a, a Trek fan, what do you think of just the absolute love for the original series that has totally emerged recently. I mean, like I've always loved the original series, but yeah, like, you know, uh, Star Trek discovery has so many homages to, to the original series. And then you have strange new worlds right now, which is flat out, you know, before the original series, but it's all, you know, coming back to where it all started. How, how do you feel about that? Well, I'm very excited about it. I mean, I, I have to confess I've not yet, had the chance to see strange new worlds but believe me i've heard plenty from the fans about it i've heard that it's great i've uh i've i've heard that uh it has more of the original series feel than uh, than any of of the recent uh star trek productions whether it was discovery or picard or whatever um and you know what i i'm i'm fine with whatever uh, i'm fine with star trek uh, anything that keeps Star Trek alive, anything that introduces a new generation to the original series of Star Trek, I'm I'm all for. Uh, you know, when JJ when JJ's movies came out, <clears throat> and a lot of people are like, "This isn't Star Trek. Ah, he's ruined Star Trek." And they would ask me what I think of it, and I would say, "You know what? Here's what I'm hoping will happen. Some." teenagers or 20 something year olds will go to see this jj abrams star trek movie because of oh, chris pine and oh, zach quinto and blah 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 and they'll come out and they'll go hey that was a pretty cool movie wasn't there a show back in the 60s called star trek and they'll go back and they'll watch the original series so yep. in as much as any of these uh productions tv or movies uh, introduce a new generation of fans to the original series of Star Trek. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I know that they're not making these shows for me. You know, I know that I am not their target audience. They are trying to cast a much wider net. They're trying to reach younger people. And uh, I'm fine with that. You know, people my age are like, this is garbage. This isn't Star Trek. Well, as soon as you come to terms with the fact that they didn't make it for me, they didn't make it for 60 year olds. They didn't make it for 65 year olds. They're making it for a new generation. They know the Star Trek fans are going to watch it. So they're trying to reach a new generation. And I get that. And I, I respect that. So live and let live. That's, that's nice. how I feel about it. Yeah. That's totally. a great attitude. That's yeah. an awesome attitude to have. And that's, you know, that's one of the great things about Star Trek, right? Is because, 
there's been so many eras, so many different shows. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I got to mention one of my co-hosts on Retro Doctopus, my buddy Nintendo, a little shout out. He is the biggest Star Trek fan that I personally know. And he just recently has taken it upon himself to, he's like, I'm going to watch them all. I've seen oh them all. God. I've seen them all already, but he's been just, just filling his spare time. And he started with the yeah. original and he is caught up and is on Brave New Worlds. Oh my on gosh. Brave. And that includes, wow. that includes Picard. That includes everything. Enterprise, everything. Does he, Voyager. Does he everything. have a job? <laughs> he does. He does. And does he and have he, any family or friends? I mean, like, how do you watch that much Star Trek and have like, a, anything fair, else? You... To be fair, it took a while. You know, he's been doing this for quite a while, but uh, most of this year for sure. But wow. this is just kind of like what he said. He's like, you know, I haven't seen these shows uh, in a long time, and it'd be nice to like catch them all at once to sort of get new opinions on these old things. You know, there are certain shows like Enterprise and Voyager that uh, don't have the fan bases as some of the other ones. And it was really refreshing to hear him say, like, you know, there, there's good about all of it, you know. And he even changed his favorite from one to another. Um, oh, really? And uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, and he he just loves it all. He just really looking because it's it's like one thing if you were into it for a short time, and you're like, oh, I I caught this one. That's when I watched it. You know what um, I've noticed, Steve, but... is that everybody everybody tends to have their Star Trek. Mm -hmm. And it and it often not always not always but it often corresponds with when you were born. Yeah, you know, people sure. my age, yep. the original series is the yep. is the way, and mm -hmm. uh, people that the generation behind me, next generation was their jam, mm -hmm. and then people after them it was Discovery. So whatever Star Trek was the first one you discovered when you were young is is typically kind of your you know your nostalgic favorite. Right. Uh, for, by the way, I, I want to thank you, Leo, for the shout out about Star Trek Continues. That that series was my love letter to Star Trek. Um, I made that show to to say thank you to Bill Shatner and Leonard Nimoy and Gene Roddenberry and everybody that made that show what it was back when I was a little kid. And it had such an impact on me and millions of others that I wanted more than anything to pay tribute to them and say thank you as best I could and use whatever skills I've developed over the years, whether it was an acting or filmmaking, storytelling, uh, and then bring a bunch of other people together that were wonderful people and gifted in their fields, whether it was uh, film or di director of photography or lighting or makeup or props or wardrobe and make something really special. And, and I think we did that. And I'm I'm incredibly proud of Star Trek Continues. I, I love to hear that. And, and you can really tell with like, especially like your speech towards <laughs> the uh, the end of the last episode, uh, you, you know, it's really, you gave uh, a, a true ending to the original series that we, mm. we were obviously, you know, was taken from us from the early cancellation. Um, yeah. But you, you really ended the show uh, where, you know, it, it should have been ended, you know, where, where Kirk becomes Admiral and, and, you know, you go on to the movies, but you gave it a, an incredible send off. And thank you for that. Thank you. A lot of people don't even realize that Star Trek was abruptly just canceled. Yeah. Uh, it didn't really have any kind of closure. And uh, I mean, in my opinion, of course, I'm partial, but I still think I'm right. It was one of the most iconic shows in television history. And it never yeah, had an ending. Absolutely. It never had any kind of closure. And uh, so we we did what we set out to do and, and finish the five-year mission. We return the Enterprise to Earth and leave everyone right where they were when the motion picture began. And I'm incredibly proud of, of the job that everybody on STC did. Awesome. That's really amazing to hear, you know, uh, that you were such a fan. And, you know, you know, as a fan watching this from the outside, I certainly hope that I, you know, obviously you have the son of uh, the original Scotty right, is, is right. playing Scotty, which is amazing, Mister Doohan. Um, but like, <clears throat> you never know. You know, is this just a job for these people, or does it mean something more? And and as fans, we because we're big dorks on the dork mm -hmm. name. I don't know if you. I, I, 
<laughs> Sorry to, I didn't want to bury that lead. In case you haven't noticed, in case you didn't realize, but uh, we're we're big fat dorks actually. But um, yeah. So I mean, it, you never know if if the people who are creating it are, are are into it like that or whatever. But you want them to be. So it's pretty cool that that's really what it meant for you. And you. Well, were let me tell you something, Steve. If somebody spends one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of their own money and makes eleven hour-long episodes with full cast and crew and rebuilds the soundstage and doesn't make one penny from it, you know they're fans. So you were a producer on this. I know. I created it, bro. Oh, oh I, yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize. Oh, it's... And it's, surprise! I, it is my baby. Wow. I, I, I started it. I cast everyone. I directed. I exec produced. I edited. I... Wow. I, I had my hand in every decision from the color of Very paint cool. on, a, on a wall to the choice of fabric of somebody's costume. I, uh, it was my baby, start to finish, in every, in every way. Now, speaking of like the soundstage and stuff, uh, am I correct when I say that you have a studio that you give tours? Yes! I'm so glad you asked that! Thank you, Ben. <laughs> um, <laughs> He, when, we finished, favorite again. when we <laughs> when we finished Star Trek Continues, and we were no longer making episodes, uh, a wonderful gentleman, dang right they are, Sherry, uh, a, a wonderful gentleman named Ray Tessie, who runs an organization called the Neutral Zone, stepped up and contacted me and said, "Hey, we'd like to take over your studio." Now, of course, we're not making episodes anymore, right? Right. So we're not raising money. But guess what? The guy that owns the building still expects rent to be paid every month. And the electric company still expects the utility bills to be paid. So the neutral zone took over our studio. And it is still standing exactly the way we left it in all of its glory. In fact, they just went down there a few days ago. 10 or 12 people went down and did a whole bunch of, of uh, painting, repainting and fixing and a little facelift on everything because, and here comes the good part, <laughs> around September when it starts to cool off in South Georgia, which is where the studio is, Kingsland, Georgia, they open the studio for walkthroughs. Free, oh, that's awesome. free of charge to walk through the original Enterprise. And you guys, all of the sets are connected to the corridor, just like the original soundstage. So when those doors open and you step into that corridor, you are in it. And you'll feel like you're 10 oh, years wow. old again, walking around the original Enterprise. Sit in the wow. captain's chair, step up on the transporter platform. It is like walking through a dream. Wow. And I go down personally and give the tours myself. Because um, I Why probably you? know more about the studio and everything about it right. than anyone else. And I have a vested interest. I love the, love the uh, absolutely love the, the studio. I go down there for no reason at all, just to, just to, uh, to see the beautiful sets that we built. Right. Um, so, NeutralZoneStudios.com. Check it out. Go to NeutralZoneStudios.com and you can find places to sign up in uh, starting in september we'll do it one weekend every month september october november december oh, january nice. february march uh until it starts to get hot again and uh, i'm telling you nothing in your lives will ever compare to walking through the original enterprise well if you want to learn more definitely there's uh check the show notes up above or down below depending on where you're watching or listening to us and check out star trek continues if you love the original series you guys got it spot on from mm. uh, from from just the the filming the music everything you know is just it's like you're watching the we original set the bar more. really high you know there are a lot of there have been hundreds of fan productions over the years hundreds of all varying levels of quality and it's not it's not i'm not i'm not I'm not trying to diss any fan productions. Um, fan productions are made by fans. They're made by, by people who love whatever the source material is and they want to honor it. And that's great. And I'm all for that. But not everybody is a filmmaker. Not everybody knows how to light a set. Not everybody knows how to write a script. Not everybody knows 
uh, has any an experience in acting or music or uh, camera work or any number of uh, editing or any number of elements that go into production. So um, we set the bar really high when I started Star Trek Continues. I was determined that we were going to tell Star Trek type morality stories, ethical questions and moral dilemmas and and thought provoking stories the way the original series did. And uh, I'm incredibly proud of the storytelling. You know, anybody can go to Lowe's and buy some lumber <clears throat> and paint and, and build a set. But that's not what made Star Trek Star Trek. Right. And it wasn't the special effects. And it wasn't flipping open a communicator. And it wasn't beaming down. What made Star Trek Star Trek was the storytelling. I was going to say the chemistry. Exactly. The chemistry. And that does not happen by accident. You can't just Captain Kirk fights the Klingons. No. That is not what made Star Trek Star Trek. So from the very beginning, I uh, I determined that we were going to tell Star Trek style stories in the vein, in the feel, in the spirit of the original series. In answer to Cody's question, yes, yes not only have I met Bill Shatner, but Bill and I are good friends. We've done several events together. We've had dinner together. We've walked the streets of Dubai together. And I love Bill to death. He is the father figure I never had. And I'm incredibly proud to know him. Oh, wow. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I know uh, we definitely need to talk more than, than just Star Trek. But, I, I, you know, me being a big Trekkie, you know, I, I'm geeking out right now. Uh, but looking at, you know, uh, how you were in Star Trek Continues and also uh, Jimmy Doohan's uh, son. In, yeah, in Chris. As well. Uh, I would love to see both of you, you know, some producer somewhere, if they're seeing this, uh, for Strange New Worlds. Like, Strange mm -hmm. New Worlds is brought on, like, Spock is one of the main characters in it. They brought in Nohura. Uh, and, uh, spoiler, uh, Kirk's brother is in it. You know, it'd be awesome to see you brought on as, like, a young Kirk. And, and uh, Jimmy's son looks like, a you know, a young Scotty, you know? Yeah. So, well, uh, I think they're, I'll be honest with you, I've already seen pictures. I think they've already cast some of these characters that are going to be showing up. And as much as I love you, Leo, you might want to check that the prescription on your glasses. Because I played Captain Kirk in Star Trek Continues 20 years older than Bill Shatner was when he played the role. So... Um, uh, there is no, there is no playing young Kirk <laughs> in my future. I don't think unless I, uh, unless I well, make it, my own film and and uh, cast myself. <laughs> well, it's the, it's the vodka talking, so just ignore me. I, I love it. Hey, ha have another drink, buddy. I love there what it's doing for well, you. I see it. The honey glows back. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> honey glows back. And I think I think what Leo meant by that is that nobody would believe you are the age that you say you are yeah that you could pass for the young kirk right well god bless you guys i yeah. i i love that, that i love that there are people out there that think that's true <laughs> but uh, you know what i'm very very honored very <clears throat> glad that we got the chance to um to make 11 full length episodes mm -hmm. and i got to say thank you to Bill Shatner, I got to play a character that that was my role model when I was a little boy, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a it was really a dream come true. And you know, when I'm long gone, those episodes were will far outlast me, um, and I'm very 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 grateful for the opportunity to be some small part of the Star Trek. So before we move off of Star Trek, so what was it about Kirk for you? Like, what was it about this character specifically that? Honestly, just, yeah. I'll tell you, Steve, um, I was nine years old when I discovered the original series and my parents had just divorced and my dad was gone. Never really had much interest in being a dad, if you know what I mean. And uh, my mom and I lived in this little apartment. We moved into this little apartment. We didn't have any furniture. I'll never forget. We had a 19 inch black and white television that sat on the floor in the living room because we didn't have a table for it. And I came home from school one day and was switching channels. There were only three. 
And I found this TV show. And there was this guy. And he was strong and handsome and leader of men. And he went on adventures with his friends. And and uh, and I, I just gravitated toward Kirk. He was the dad that was not around. He was the father figure that, that I didn't have. And uh, so... That's all I can say, you know, is that um, is that he, he came in. Star Trek and Captain Kirk in particular came into my life at a very pivotal moment. And I know I'm not alone. I know that there are millions of people out there that discovered Star Trek at a very pivotal moment in their, in their childhood mm. that moved them to become scientists or teachers or go into the military or uh, into astronomy or engineering or any a number of things because they were inspired by star trek right so uh what a better way to say thank you to star trek than to make 11 more episodes and mm. finish the series and bring in wonderful people like chris doing and and uh and todd habercorn to play spock and, and grant imahara to play sulu and and the guest stars that we had, my gosh, you know, <laughs> guest stars from classic TV shows, Battlestar Galactica, Doctor Who, uh, Star Trek, uh, <laughs> Star Wars, Buffy, Buck Rogers. Um, it was a, it was a great experience. A great experience. Well, that was a very honest answer. You know, thanks a lot for that. That was that that's it's it's amazing. You know, the power of uh, entertainment, right? Like, you know, it's just silly. It's silly stuff on the outside, but, you know, we connect with it, you know, and you, you, you do, you find that, that one character that resonates in some way that it feels something that you need or. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't you know. be more right, Steve. I'll tell you what, bro. You know what? I've done hundreds of convention appearances over the years and I have had literally hundreds of fans come up to me and tell me how much Full Metal Alchemist meant to them. Or how much Broly got them through a difficult time in their lives. Or how much Tamaki from Oran High School uh, helped them through a, a dark chapter in their, in, their, in their lives. And I sit there overtaken with humility and gratitude that, because I remember... You know what I mean? I was one of them. Right. I remember going to Star Trek conventions when I was 12 and meeting DeForest Kelly and George Takei and Jimmy Dewan and standing across the table and telling them how much Star Trek meant to me. And I look into these kids' eyes and I'm filled with so much love and so much gratitude. And there are kids that come up to me who know my story and they will come up to my autograph table and they'll lean in and they'll say, you are my Captain Kirk. And I'll just like, I'll just tear up because it never occurred to me in a million years that I would ever be that for anybody. And uh, so I'm, I'm incredibly grateful. Like we talked about before we came on the air. Right, right. You're an, there you're an amazing person. You're there an amazing are a lot guy. of things. There are a lot of yeah. things to be mad about. There are a lot of things to be angry about and hurt about and frustrated about. But if you take a minute, there are an awful lot of things to be grateful for. So I, I try my best to focus on those. Awesome. You could hear a pin drop just now. I know, this, I know, I know. This <laughs> soliloquy brought to you by Topo Chico. <laughs> Topo Chico for uh, all your half drunk uh, needs. I uh, want to remind everybody, I'm keeping an eye on the comments. So uh, if you have questions, uh, definitely post them in the chat and I'll get to them as best as I can. Uh, so before we went live, you were talking about where you have a little bit of time off before you, you start uh, convention. <laughs> I was waiting for this question. <laughs> so uh, you, you mentioned you're binging Netflix. What are, you, what are you watching? Oh, my gosh. I'm in love with Yellowstone. Really? Okay. First of all, I love Ozark. Yes. Oh my God. Oh, I God. loved. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much she loved it. 
<laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Leo, quick, go to commercial. Save Vic. <laughs> oh my gosh! It, the, the name just went right out of my head. The the real the real nice guy who is a coach of the of the team. Oh 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 oh. Uh, uh, T T. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ted, want... Ted, Ted, ah! Ted Lasso. Ted, Ted Lasso. Lasso! <laughs> I love Ted Lasso. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed Ozark. What's wrong, Steve? Nothing. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. That's okay, why I'm I brought him with the volume control I'm sorry. right here. I get, I get well see, that's what you get for wearing your your headphones, man. I No, I I, I, I get it now. I'm sorry. Um uh, but you know what? I have to tell you guys. Okay, so I'm also binging Supernatural. Yeah. Very cool. That was a show I never saw when it yeah. came out. It was a big deal, and I never saw it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, what was the other one that, that I, I binged that I had never seen when it came out, and I really enjoyed it? Um, Lost. No. Uh, I, I enjoyed that. But let me tell you, Yellowstone, you guys, Okay. When I saw an advertisement for it, and I just heard Yellowstone with Kevin Costner, I thought to myself, what, is he like a park ranger at Yellowstone National Park? How exciting could that be? <laughs> I mean, people get mauled at Yellowstone like every other day. Yeah, that would be a good show. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I thought, oh, it's but. he's probably a park ranger at <laughs> Yellowstone National Park. Wow, that sounds like one adventure after another. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? So I, I I didn't really think much about it. And then a friend of mine told me how great it was. And I started watching it and they were not lying. Yeah. In fact, I can't get enough of it. I, I almost blew off this interview tonight so I could watch more of it because I, <laughs> I, I, it should is, have. I'll tell you what it is. The writing, it, you know what it is? It's like, It's like Game of Thrones in the West. It's like this family that are cattle ranchers and they have this big ranch, like Dallas. Remember the remember that show? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So it it's a combination of Do all you of the business. Who are? Yes. It's it's a combination of all dinner. it's a combination of all the business dealings and all of the corporate struggles, along with all of the personal family. Uh, um, dysfunction <laughs> and all of the relationships and whoever's writing the scripts the writing is absolutely phenomenal hmm. so okay there, that's the answer Leo awesome well I, I got a couple of suggestions for you if you like Ted Lasso I do uh, check out Acapulco okay uh, also on Apple TV very uh, very um Good hearted show, very similar to Ted Lasso. Good. That's what the world needs more of. Yeah, totally. Um, if you like Ozark, um, I'm sad that it, it's probably won't get finished, but Mine Hunter. Okay. It's phenomenal. Okay. Um, oh, and uh The Offer. Okay. Uh it's the making of The Godfather. Uh only 10 episodes, uh one and you know, one series and done, but oh wow, friggin' amazing. About the make, okay. Now I like it because yeah. I'm all about the making of films. I love the, mm. I mean, being a filmmaker, I love the behind the scenes. Of, right. You know, I like watching the sausage. You know what I mean? And figuring out how they solve these problems and how they overcome mm. these obstacles. The offer. Yeah, the offer. It's on. Uh, I believe it's on Paramount Plus. Okay. Well, Squally, one of you guys that's that that's a friend of mine out there, remind me about the offer. So, so basically, is it, it, so basically oh, Leo, e email that to me yeah. and we'll, we'll email that to Vic. <laughs> yeah, it goes into like uh, how to how the mafia was connected to the filmmaking, how the pro producer got his start, how he went from uh, uh, being a programmer at uh, the Rand Corporation to uh, ah. writing, uh, writing uh, Hogan's Heroes. Mm. And then, yeah, it, wow. it's 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 amazing. Is it, I can't, is I'm it, writing. I'm writing myself a note about it yeah. right now. Is it an actual documentary? Is it a dramatized like behind? Well, the it, 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 it's uh, the 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 actual um, producer from The Godfather actually produced this, and it's based off of his book. And it, yeah, it, it, there is some dramatization, but uh, it's supposed to be fairly accurate to to the actual you know 
issues that happen. Okay. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah, I, I just wonder if it was out. like I, I don't know if you uh, I don't know if you saw my name is Dolomite, but it is really good. Oh yes, that was really good. Okay, I'm right. I'm so, gonna write that one down. So, that was that, that was the big Eddie Murphy. <laughs> and so movie. much for your free time, Vic. Mm. Yeah. I gotta go. I mean, if you like, if you like uh, '70s black exploitation, like I do, uh, <laughs> check out check out that one. That was a just phenomenal. It's just a movie, oh. but oh, so yeah. Good. But but that that amazing. really sh- that movie really showed that you know. I but, love it. It's I, oh, yeah. I, mean, I love Rudy Ray more anyway. Like he's freaking awesome. He's so like those old movies are. Just put them on. Just put them on. Oh, yeah. Just right. throw them on the background. Right. Human tornado. Like, you know. But but name. watching that, it's like saying when you watch it, you're like, holy shit, like Eddie Murphy is still as funny as ever. You so know? good. Oh so yeah. I just love him. Love him. Uh, and uh, it hurt so so bad when he became like this, you know, he only makes bad movies now guy. And it's like, <laughs> no, no, he's Eddie fucking Murphy. Yeah. Uh we had he's a couple Vic questions. Fucking Mignana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Does it sound the same? No, so, um, I was trying though, Vic. I was trying. Knows. Knows. Uh, Mahana Jade uh, Long Walker is asking, "How long did it take to get uh, Star Trek continues together?" Well, hi there, Mahana. I know Mahana. She's wonderful. Um, uh, the answer to that question would be um, about. Well, let's see. How long did it take to get it together? You mean like? get everyone together to start filming or how long did it take us to make the whole series? Um, that's, that's the way I'm taking it. Yeah, I would take, yeah, I was taking it as the whole series. Uh, well, it took us about a year to build the sets. And during that year I was casting and writing the first story and getting the crew together and picking a date that everybody could do <laughs> that everyone could descend on this little uh, town in Georgia. And uh, we had, ironically, a five-year mission. Uh, When we started from the beginning of our first episode to the ending of our series, we shot for five years, and we shot 11 episodes, so we averaged a little over two a year and uh, had our own five-year mission. Very cool. We had another question that came in. Uh, Pinkie Pie Cupcake 77 is asking... Ever watched Demon Slayer? I have not, Pinkie Pie. You know what? I know that it's... I've heard that it's really great. I know a lot of people love Demon Slayer. And uh, I, I know several of the voice actors that are in it. And they're really talented. Um, but I have not seen it. Um, Travella likes Yellowstone. Good for you, Travella. Yeah. 1883. Yep. I have heard 1883 was really good. Yeah. 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 I think he mentioned that it was the... Pr- the prequel to Yellowstone. Yes. Yes. Oh. And oh, that nice. that's that actually that's Billy Middlestat. He is the one of the owners and promoters for Maryland Pop and Horicon and Georgia Pop and Horicon as long as well as Tidewater Horror Convention. Ah. There you go, Billy. I give you a little shout out, buddy. There you go. Good plug, man. So, Love those guys, man. Him and Brian, fucking awesome guys. Um, I just saw a question I wanted to answer. Some somebody said, um, uh, "How can fans help get you?" Oh to yes. Um, you guys, I would love to believe, and maybe this is just really naive of me, but I would love to believe that organizers care what their attendees want. Maybe that's naive of me, because I know for a fact that there are convention organizers out there that don't care or listen to what the attendees write them and ask for. Uh, they do what they want. It's their little kingdom and they do what they want and they pay, they, they ignore the fans. But I, I do believe that there are plenty of organizers out there that actually care what the paying attendees want. So my encouragement to all of you is write the organizers of conventions in your area. Write them emails, get your friends to join in, and request that they have me as a guest at their show. Um, I would love to get to some more events. I would love to see all of you as many times as possible everywhere around the country and the world. I've so dearly missed my friends in the UK, the fans in the UK, and Australia, and New Zealand, and 
all of these places that I've been dozens of times that I haven't been back to since, uh, since uh, COVID, but I would love to get back to them. So hopefully the convention or organizers care about what the fans want. So make your voices heard. Be positive. Don't be rude. Don't be, uh, don't be jerks, but be kind and polite and, uh, and tell them how much you'd love to have me at your event. And hopefully I'll get to see you at one. Awesome. Uh, Squally says, I finished binging Schmigadoon. I, that's another good one. Holy crap. Is that good? I heard, you know what? Squally's been telling me how good Schmigadoon <laughs> was, and I have not yet gotten to see that. I'm, I'm kind of fixated on Yellowstone and Supernatural right now, but. Um, what's my favorite lightsaber? <laughs> well, uh, we looking for just color or hilt. You know it? what? I, no, no, no. Hilt. Okay. I will. T I, you know what? You know why he's asking that question, Steve? Because to... SSJ Mark bought the most badass Obi-Wan episode four lightsaber from oh, me. Nice about a month ago and uh and then he bought an actual authentic graflex which is what they made luke's lightsaber from in the original star wars and i will answer that mark my favorite believe it or not is obi-wan's from episode one um i have a collection upstairs of dozens of lightsabers and there was a 20-year gap between the, the original Star Wars trilogy and Episode One, And the day that Ewan McGregor, his picture popped up on the front of Premier Magazine as young Obi-Wan Kenobi, and there was a, lightsa a new lightsaber hanging from his belt, I just about lost it. <laughs> and I, I started drawing it. And 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 drawing up this this the, the, the uh, details, and I hired a machine shop in Houston to custom CNC build me one. I've got it upstairs in my collection room, and it is beautiful. I've had people offer me four and five thousand dollars for this thing. It is the most beautiful thing. So that's kind of my favorite because of the uh, sentimental value of it. That's you awesome. Know, the dude's got good answers. He's oh, just, he, I mean, he's just got good answers all day long. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, he, you know. Believe um, me, believe me, I am a I'm a fellow dork, Steve. I mean, you could have said I like Obi Wan because it has got the the spike ball at the end, and and I would have been like, oh yeah, I like the spike ball at the end. You know what? The spike ball is cool. And when I found out that the spike ball had holes in each of the little cubes. I went crazy again and took it back to the machine shop. I'm like, dude, you have to drill holes in these squares. <laughs> this, is, this is only 97% accurate. <laughs> Every time I would find out a new detail, I would take it back to him and go, oh, the knurling on this, on this button's not right. I need you to make a new one. <laughs> like, I was obsessed, man. That's great. Uh, but uh, some more questions came in. James uh, is asking, "Do you reprise your role as Broly in Dragon Ball Super movie?" Well, the Dragon Ball Super. If you're talking about the Dragon Ball Super movie that came out in 2019, yeah, I have played Broly for 15 years in all three movies. Four, if you count the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, and uh, all the video games. So. Uh, if you're talking about that one, unless there's one that just came out that I don't know about, um, yeah, that would be me. Uh, now, I don't know if this is related or not, but I believe you said, uh, wh where the hell did my notes go? I think it was the con you have uh, coming in August. Is it August? Yeah. Uh, or new UltraCon. You said you have a special announcement coming up that you oh, can't no, see. That's, that that. oh. that's Anime Matsuri in Houston. Uh -huh. You guys, this is one of the biggest, best anime conventions on the planet, bar none. Trust me, I've been to most all of them, and this is one of the best. It's amazing. And uh, last year, they blew the doors out of the convention center in Houston. They had over 50,000 people there. Wow. They're, they're poised to have more this year. I'll be back this year, and there are some very big announcements that I am super excited about. 
so much so that I'm going to have a Topo Chico. <laughs> and uh, and um, and you have that lemonade, Steve. And Leo, hit that vodka, baby. There we go. There we go. And um, and uh, that's going to be at the end of July, middle of July. We just put. We just worked this out. I was just invited to a trading card show in uh, in New Jersey in the middle of of July. So be looking, you guys, for the announcements on that. And if any of your listeners or viewers out there or anywhere around the Jersey area, come see me. Uh, and then also, uh, at the end of July is Anime Matsuri, the last weekend in July. And then mid-August, I will be at a trading card show in, uh, in New York at the New Yorker Hotel. And then at the end of August, my birthday weekend, I, uh, incidentally, I will be at UltraCon in West Palm Beach, another amazing event with amazing people. Uh, I've got more events lined up in September, October, November. Uh, we'll be announcing them. You guys can ch uh, check out uh, if you're interested. Any of you in following me, any of your any of your uh, your viewers or listeners, you can follow me on Twitter. We make announcements about appearances and all kinds of things on Twitter. I just started a TikTok. Uh, my fan club is called risenbullrangers.com. Uh, and, um, and we're making announcements about appearances and all kinds of things on at those locations all the time. Awesome. And you even have a cameo as well. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. See, I'm the worst. <laughs> I'm the worst, promo worst self-promoter you will ever meet. Um, yes, I'm on cameo. And so those of you that may either not be able to get to an event or even if you can, but you want to, uh, maybe you want to get a personalized video for your friend or your roommate or your mom or your dad or your uncle or uh, sell, tell somebody happy birthday or, uh, or happy graduation or congratulations on your wedding. Anybody that you know that may be a fan of my work, you can order them a personalized video at cameo.com. And I got all those links in the show notes up above or down below. Uh, Pinkie Pie Cupcake 777 is asking, question for Vic. If you're okay with it, would it be okay if I showed you my drawings when I meet you someday? Absolutely. It, uh, they say there's a character that was inspired by Edward. Pinkie, I would absolutely be honored to see your drawings. You make sure and bring them and whatever part of the country you're in, uh, if I come to an event near you, you come and bring them. I can't wait to see them. And uh, Pinky's saying, will you return to Atlanta, Georgia someday? So I would assume Atlanta-ish area. Well, you know what? Um, I, I don't know yet, Pinky. Um, I, I would like to be invited. <laughs> um, I used to be a regular at Anime Weekend Atlanta every year for probably a dozen years. And, uh, and then uh, new management took it over and... Uh, and I haven't been back there in a while, but I would love to come back. Uh, Dragon Con, I've been a guest, a signing guest at Dragon Con before. Um, so all I can say, Pinky, is you and as many of your friends as possible just keep writing these conventions and ask them to bring me down. I would love to be there, believe me. I'll be there in a heartbeat. And uh, SSJ Mark says, uh, I believe this is talking about the, uh, the movie, said he's talking about a new movie coming out next month. That was in response to the question. Uh, what was it? The Broly, <clears throat> the Broly question about the super. Oh movie. well, if there's a new movie coming out next month, I'm not in it. So. And we don't want to see that. It's no. I spit on it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not authentic. Well, I will tell you one thing, guys. Um, there were three or four Dragon Ball movies before the Broly movie that I that I was in. And the Broly movie made more than three times what any other Dragon Ball movie made. All of the other Dragon Ball movies made roughly 30 some million. And the Broly movie made well over 100 million. And uh, so it did very well for them. Um, I'm very sorry not to be playing that role anymore, but. Uh, Hopefully, uh, you know, I spent enough years as Broly and invested enough in creating that character that uh, the fans won't forget me. Just just to make sure, um, I don't know if uh, you'd mind giving us a Kakarot, you know, for the fans. 
for the fans. <laughs> Steve. Steve. I don't know. Wow. Jeez. Well, it hurts a little. Yeah, it doesn't. But I'll do it for you, bro. I'll Thanks, do man. it. You ready? Don't do it for me. Do it for Pinkie Pie and SSJ Mark and all the awesome dorks we got hanging out all okay. night in the chat room. Okay, good call, man. Good call. Wait, wait, wait it. Wait to uh he, he pulled the heartstring on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait to wait to put the pressure on, man. You know how to do it. Kakarot. Kakarot. Well, I guess uh I guess I deserve that. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I, I didn't warn you about the headphones. Ooh, sorry. Oh, no, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that oh, was, that was Steve, awesome. Steve, I forgot to tell you because um, we kind of do know Vic. Um, yeah, <laughs> put him on the spot. He might, he might, he might give you what you want. <laughs> I don't do that very often, Steve. By the way, I get asked that a lot, and I don't do it because well, you know it's pretty. It's a pretty good throat ripper. Yeah, but uh, well, I appreciate you doing it for uh, for our fans and uh, and also maybe me possibly. Uh, thank you. Thank well, you. Well, I can say friend. when you just did that, I think my son and his girlfriend are home because I told you they were huge fans. I think I heard them both scream like girls back there. <laughs> 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 and you're welcome. So, uh, and, um, Squally, I want to thank Squally for mentioning that too. I, I've done uh, a fair amount of live action work. And I've got some more that are going to be coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I would encourage anyone that's interested in that to see. Uh... <laughs> hey, Cody. Sorry. Um, I uh, I would encourage anybody who's interested in some of that to keep their eyes open. And get, again, on my social media platforms and, and fan page and stuff. Yeah, you have uh, Exposure and Fruit of the Poisonous Tree. Both uh, you're working with Eric Roberts on. Uh, yes, yes. Eric is a cool guy. Very, Eric, is Eric, awesome. is, Eric is a very cool guy. Yeah. And uh, and then I've done some. I've done several others too. Oh my gosh, Sherry, thank you. By the way, any Star Trek fans out there? Not if you have seen Star Trek Continues. I hope you'll join our Facebook page, Star Trek, STC official Facebook page. Um, and then uh, and then if you haven't seen Star Trek Continues, what the heck's wrong with you? Go see it and watch it. It's all free. Star Trek continues.com and then join us on Facebook. Yep. Uh, so a couple questions came in. Somebody, uh, I, too many comments. Uh, oh, here it was. Oh, yeah, dude. It's been, yeah. it's been insane. I've been uh, abs it. Absolutely love it. So I'm going to try to make sure I get to everybody. Uh, Bryant is asking, so do you like spinach on your pizza or am I just crazy? <laughs> Bryant, you can take all the spinach in the world and you can shove it. In your, in your big mouth that sounds like a no yeah you know you know what the only spinach i like is spinach and artichoke dip and i freaking pick out the spinach really I mean, just like the cream cheese like all yeah of like Fine. like like if a if a sliver of spinach gets in the artichoke <laughs> dip i'll eat it yeah. but I mean, uh, he's broly not popeye exactly not a spinach guy not a spinach guy. That's all right. Nobody eats crab rangoons for the crab either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Made with real imitation crab. Oh, crab with, crab with a K. No, you're there for the cream cheese. Just be honest with yourself and move on. It's fine. Right? <laughs> uh, I had I had some crab rangoon in uh, in Hawaii that actually had crab in it. No. And it was a delightful departure <laughs> holy crap um, so uh <laughs> was asking so uh you've done a, a a ton of incredible uh voice acting is there a, a voice actor that you look up to um there are a lot of voice actors whose work whose abilities i admire I, I wouldn't say I look up to them because Ooh. I consider us peers. I, I, you know, we work together. We've worked on a lot of pro projects together, but there are a lot of voice actors that I have a great deal of, uh, of admiration for their abilities. Yes. 
Was that the question you had up on the I, screen? No, I misread the question. That, okay, because I, I was going to say, Leo, oh, no, no, no. the vodka. <laughs> that, no, that, that was a question I had written down, and I thought they were asking the same question. But oh. uh, actually, no, they were asking, uh, uh, what's your favorite character to uh, to voice act? Yes, I did I did see uh, that question. Yeah. Um, my favorite, I, you know, I just got to say, my favorite is Full Metal Alchemist. Oh. I, I love that show. I loved that show. Um, and that character and everybody in it and the story, um, definitely my favorite. My second favorite is probably Oran High School Host Club. Not, not one that has been on television that a lot of people would know about, but it's a wonderful, wonderful, funny, charming show. Uh, I really loved being a part of that show. And uh, Cody's asking, uh, favorite album of yours? Uh, they love your music. Oh, my goodness. Favorite album of mine? Well, yeah. I see. We didn't even talk about that. I've, I've been I haven't even gotten there yet. Yeah, I've been writing and producing music twice as long as I've been voice acting. So that's a long time. And um, I, uh, I've i got six original CDs on iTunes. Um, and uh, I don't think I could pick a favorite. You know what I mean? You, if it's something you wrote all of it, <laughs> if you created all of it, it's you know it's all got a special place in your heart. So um, I don't know that I would say I have a favorite. I mean, some some of them are more popular than others, but I don't know that I, I would say I have a favorite. Uh, well, so Vincent, thank you, Vincent. Vincent likes If These Walls Could Talk, that, that album. There's one called Revix, which is a, a take on the word remix. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, club mix, high energy uh, covers of some of my originals and some anime themes that i've that i've done and uh yes you do mark god bless you buddy and um and then there's another one called metafiction there's another one uh christmas cd there are two instrumental piano cds uh that are very relaxing easy going <laughs> i just asked you for a kakarot <laughs> i think i might actually have a video of him doing journey somewhere I mean, now I did that. You know what? Hey, Bryant, why aren't you eating spinach right now? <laughs> Didn't we already talk about this? You should be stuffing spinach in your face, bro. You don't have time to be asking more questions like that. <laughs> um, you know what? I love Journey and I love '80s music. That was when I kind of came into music, anyway, as a you know, as a college person, college age. And uh, I have a live concert DVD that um that i did a a journey song in the concert so uh that and all my cds are available at the store at risenbullrangers.com uh you can check that out and or you could come to a convention i'm at and i'll have them at the convention i was gonna say yeah you can get them at the store folks but you don't it's not the same it's, you got to get off your ass. You've got to go out to the convention. You've got to meet these people that you love in person because, hey, you know, you don't get memories from a store. That is true. And I would love the chance to meet all of you in person and sign these for you in person. It's it's much more special than than getting them online. Yeah. Uh, weird journey fact. Did you know journey had a video game? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> All right, look at you making them sweat now. Stop. No, no. Uh, yeah, it was uh, for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and if I remember correctly, uh, you're running away from fans, and I think you need to get to the starship that's uh, on their album. Oh my gosh, Steve, I am I right with that? Uh, uh, I really uh, thought there was an arcade, and it. Was oh my like... gosh, Sherry owned it. You were just okay. Sherry okay, just said she has that game. <laughs> I, I I had it when I uh, myself when I was a kid as well is um, and, and that's what I remember. You were like, wait a minute, know, wait a minute. Did you just say on a cell phone when you were a kid? No, I owned it myself. My, oh, I thought you said on a cell phone. Self. Holy shit, maybe I need some vodka. Yeah. Uh, no, I think you got to put oh down God. that little uh, that little yeah. smoking stick you got there, buddy. <laughs> no, oh no, my no. So, it turns out actually they're uh, they're actually my, on my show. Uh, not that you would know this, Vic. <laughs> I forgive you, but on my show we do a lot of video <laughs> Thank games. You. That's our retro really? octopus for all the people. So we do a lot of video games. There is a Journey arcade game. That was actually the one that I was uh, familiar with. And um, it's the most weird looking thing. If you look up Journey arcade, like 
there are little digitized versions of all the band members heads on little video game bodies but their heads are in black and white and the rest of the game's in oh color my God. It's, it's like it's like the original mortal Kombat idea I guess it's not a fighting game, but it's it's the weirdest. Oh my god! I, I am aware of its existence. I didn't even know of the one you mentioned, um, Leo. But uh -huh. don't stop your gaming. Oh, there you go. You got some journey, guys. Oh my god! No, but I rewrote the lyrics, so it's their video game, right? Yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the spot, you just you just did that. No, no. He's quick like that. He's quick like that. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I just looked it up re right here for the Atari. Uh, the player must lead the band members to their Scarab escape vehicle as featured on the cover and protect the concert cash from love-crazed sure. groupies. Sure. Oh, yeah. That looks good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Heather, it certainly does. Heather Horton's like, that sounds 80s. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, it is. It is. A bunch of flipping and flopping mullets. Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, Pinkie Pie was asking uh, for Vic. Uh, what was the most funniest scene you've played while voice acting Edward? Wow, Pinky, there is there are too many to name. Uh, if you've seen Full Metal Alchemist, you know that there were way too many funny scenes. <laughs> um, the character was just so much fun. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the funny scenes, obviously, are when he's called short and he freaks out. And uh, some of his rants are rather humorous, let's say. But, um, yeah, I too many to even name, Pinky. Too many to name. I love him. Exactly, Mark. Exactly. <laughs> you guys, um, how much time did we allot for this? Uh, so whatever time you have available. So I, I, I allotted about an hour. Sounds and, uh, good. And I just noticed we're we're a little over an hour now. Um, we, we will. You must it. be having fun. Always. Always. <laughs> uh, what will wrap things up? Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, one question real quick. So yeah. I, I know uh, you have a degree in filmmaking, uh, and we talked about it earlier. Um, just to dork out a little bit, what what's your uh, editor of choice? Final Cut Pro. Nice. In fact, I edited all of Star Trek Continues. I edited all of our episodes on Final Cut on my laptop, on my 17-inch MacBook Pro. Uh, God rest its soul. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why they got rid of the 17-inch MacBook Pros. They, they don't make anything more than the 15, and I was very upset to have to lose my 17-inch MacBook Pro. But I, uh, <clears throat> I had the... Um, I had all of our episodes, all of the original, all the footage, all the raw footage from each episode would be on a USB drive. And I did so much traveling, you know, to convention appearances and stuff. And I would sit on an airplane on my MacBook Pro and edit the episodes and and work on them on flights. And wow. uh, so, yeah, I love me some Final Cut Pro. In fact, uh, there's a there's a studio computer on the other side of my my MacBook Pro right now. That's my recording studio computer. And I have I have Final Cut Pro on that on that uh, computer, and I will not upgrade the OS because I don't want to put don't a want, version. Yeah. I, I don't want to go to to Final Cut Ten and uh, and change the way everything works. So yeah, I'm having a very old OS on this system so that I can keep <laughs> using Final Cut. Uh, yeah, a lot of people feel that way with the uh, because now it's more of like a iMovie Plus, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, not interested. Yeah, Brian says uh, your studio is awesome, and Vincent, I saw your question, uh, but he has not seen Strange New Worlds yet. Yes, I'm so sorry, Vincent. I saw your question too. You must have tuned in just a little after we started because um, I oh, I love Ireland. Hello, I love you. Oh, 2 a.m. Just got back from seeing Green Day. Nice. Wow. Nice, nice, nice. Yes, I love Ireland. I've done several events there. Would love to get back there sometime soon. Write those events in Ireland. And uh, yeah, Vincent, I hadn't seen, I haven't seen Strange New Worlds yet, but I've heard it's really great. Awesome. So I'm, I intend to. Well, we could we could literally sit here all night long yeah. with Vic because there's just so many amazing things. That well, there are done. plenty of things to talk about. Um, but I'm going to say, I'm going to reiterate this one more time before we let him go. 
get off your ass, get down to a convention, see him in person. I've seen him in person. And I'll tell you, he's one of the greats out there that takes that time with every fan. You're just not, you're not money to him. You are a fan. You've got to go out and see this guy. So Leo. Yeah, uh, yeah mid July, you're going to be in Jer- uh, Jersey, Anime Matsuri, uh, end of July, New Yorker, middle of August, Ultra Con in West Palm Beach. I believe that's end of August. Uh, so ton of stuff coming up. I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. Definitely check the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us to find out about our amazing guests. And, uh, you know, if you like things about, you know, this show, I run a thing uh, called the Dorkening Podcast Network. Head on over to the dorkening.com, which we got about 40 shows on the network. Ton of awesome people doing a ton of awesome stuff. And uh, Vic, where do you like interacting with your fans? Well, uh, honestly, I, I prefer interacting with them in person, but I also have a, uh, a Twitch live stream. I have a live stream on Twitch every Wednesdays at uh, 6 p.m. Central. And we have a couple of hundred fans that join in and subscribe, and, and we talk about all kinds of fun things every week. I bring uh, several fans into the FaceTime uh, to, to video chat personally, and uh, you can check that out at, um, on Twitch. Uh, I think it's real Squally can tell you. I think it's real Vic Mignogna on Twitch. And we do that every Wednesday night at 6 Central. Nice. Awesome. Steven. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Please check out my show, Retro Redoctopus. We put out new shows every other week on the dorkening and sometimes every week because we do lots of cool bonus stuff in fact tomorrow we got a brand new episode with uh this random awesome dude we met online just you know the internet being positive once in a while you know bringing people together we got this dude we befriended from from iceland and uh we we just befriended this guy he's really active in our group and we have a whole episode about what it was like growing up a gamer in iceland because as Americans, how much about Iceland do we know? Well, you can check out our new episode. He was also on a previous episode about Back to the Future. We do lots of geeky stuff and lots of retro goodness, all sorts of video games, movies, TVs, you know, all the things, all the things you loved uh, when you were a kid. We do all that. So, yeah, thanks for having me on, Leo. It was really fun. Vic, it was awesome meeting you. And, uh, My thanks pleasure. For coming. Thanks for coming. My back. pleasure, you guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Benjamin. Yes, I know. So, yes, thank you to Vic for coming out and spending time on Creator Spotlight tonight. Um, you know, love seeing him. <laughs> you can check us out at stilltoking.com. We have a live show every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We're the only show that competes with Vic. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh-oh. But it's okay. <laughs> Um, but I will say we the, we're probably the only show that got Victor not to do his show so we could interview him on us that night. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, definitely still talking.com, you'll find out everything you need to know about what we do in this crazy world. Awesome. With that, we'll catch you guys later. Bye. Take care, guys.